Hey guys, Kevin here to bring you a new video today. For today, I'm going to be bringing you a special edition of Horror October because yesterday I watched a film in a movie theater in Boston, actually. And when you don't just go to a movie theater in Boston just to see any ordinary film, um, it was a film that was very limited in release um, that I decided to go and see because I figured I wouldn't have a ton of opportunity to see it. So I went and, go went and saw Parasite. Uh, it was a great film. Um, <laughs> uh, I didn't see Gemini Man, but um, yeah, I saw Parasite. So yeah, that was a really good film, actually. Um, you know, it was quite an adventure, you know, going all the way to AMC in Boston just to see it. But I think it was worth it. Um, and I also saw it with my brother, which is great. But, uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a fun time. Um, yeah, it was a really good film. Um, I, I liked uh, a fair amount of it uh, for the most part. I'd say, um, I'll definitely get into why, why I think that, but yeah, um, you know, I was thinking about seeing The Lighthouse, but I had a feeling that movie would be released nationwide, so that's why I was waiting to see that, and what do you know, it is being released nationwide, so I can see it at my local movie theater pretty soon, so yeah, it's all good, but I figured this film wouldn't be available for that much, so I went, went and saw it, um, in Boston, it, so, and I looked it up on Box Office Mojo, believe it or not, this movie was only playing in 33 theaters in in the country, in the United States this weekend. That's crazy. And I went and saw the, the movie at one of those 33 theaters, I guess. But yeah, let's get into the film though. It was a great film. Um, I feel like for a lot of it, I wasn't really getting like what the purpose of the movie was until like a certain turning point. Because for a lot of it, it's just like um, this person, this family is like connected with this family and they like to like feed off of them kind of like a parasite, I guess. I don't know, like like this this guy works for a boss. He, he's like a cab driver. His boss is this guy who lives at this house. And then like his son also gets tutored at that house as well. And then like... Um, what is it like the the um the son likes like another girl and then the sister also visits so yeah it's, they just have like a connection but it's almost like um like a bad connection because like they're kind of like being used um their family because like this is like a rich family who lives at this like rich house and this other family kind of like um lives like really impoverished um so they don't they don't have the best like living conditions so like it's hard for them so like they wanted to like have this family help them and they end up like taking advantage of them a lot um, along the way um, some weird things happen like that just I don't really get why but like like um, like one of these women takes off their underwear and leaves them in a cab and that leads them to believe that one of them had sex in the cab or or the cab driver park or the, the cab driver had sex in the cab so they're almost like, he was almost like blackmailed, I guess, even though he didn't have sex in the cab. So yeah, I don't know what that was all about. Like some, some parts of the movie, I'm just like, like, what are you getting at? Like, okay. Like, <laughs> I was like, what is it? What does this all mean? You know? But like, um, I don't know. I'd say like about an hour in, like it got interesting because, um, this is where I thought I felt like it picked up. It actually like the story actually really had more purpose to it was when they find out someone's been living in their basement um, because of their housekeeper who was keeping someone in their basement. And the housekeeper was the person that they kicked out. Um, but this housekeeper was feeding this person in their basement who was like, acts like a child. It's so weird. But like he, he was like, she was, this housekeeper was like feeding him. And he had said before in a line like, oh, like she eats enough for two people. Well, now you know why because she's been feeding this other guy um, down in the basement who's like, he, it was like in this like secret like corridor and like from there on like them trying to like, um, I guess like uh, keep it under wraps that there's a person down there and also like evading that family from finding out they snuck into their house um, because like they, they end up like being in this person's house in this family's house when they weren't supposed to so they have to sneak out, and that whole that whole sequence is really fun to watch. Um, 
and then from there, you know, they have to try to do what they can to to fix this whole thing because, or or do nothing, I guess, because like the father was like, um, I guess we shouldn't have a plan. Like the father was like Mr. Kim, the the poor the poor father, um, the the rich father was Mr. Park, but yeah, um, but yeah, like he didn't want to do anything about it because he felt like it could go wrong. But eventually they do go back to the house to try to, you know, fix things. But um, shit kind of hits the fan. And this is where it kind of becomes uh, not really so, so much as a horror movie, but it's definitely somewhat of a thriller movie because um, they end up, like, uh, battling it out with this guy who was, like, goes crazy because he was trapped down there for so long. So he kind of wanted to, like, exact his revenge on these people who kind of fucked him over because... This poor family who was in the house um, was actually able to, like, fend this fucking homeless guy off and trapped him, but he would get his revenge, um, and he did so by killing someone, uh, which sucks. Um, he killed someone's, he killed Mr. Kim's daughter, um, which really sucks. Um, that was really sad. And then for whatever reason, Mr. Kim killed Mr. Park as well, which is interesting um i don't know why he did that but that's something that i was really questioning like why did he kill him just because he was angry but they end up killing the crazy homeless guy who killed his daughter at least so like that that made sense but like um but then it gets interesting because um that kind of comes full circle because um mr kim ends up using the basement place as like a hideout as a means of like um you know staying safe um just like that homeless guy did and like it works out for him because like um he ends up surviving so he takes the place of the bad guy um because he didn't want to get caught and then before you know it like um interesting enough like they fast forward time and then his son who survived he had some brain damage actually from like a trauma hit but he ends up buying the house and then finding him there, which is, like, really cool because they end up, like, reuniting. Because, like, you know, obviously, you know, it's his son. Like, they want to be able to see each other again, and they did. But, yeah. And, like, and, you know, like, the mother um, was there, too. Um, there was the whole storyline with her, too, because um, they wanted to drive the old housekeeper out because um, they wanted the mother to become the housekeeper so they could feed off of them even more. They could feed off of the family even more. So they drove the old housekeeper out by um, giving her allergic reactions to peaches. That's cool. Um, for some reason, she's allergic to peaches. So you, they drive her out with that. And then um, they bring the mother in to be the housekeeper. But then, yeah, shit kind of hits the fan because the housekeeper gets back in. And from there, it's all just crazy with this this guy they found downstairs and trying to um, evade from the rich family who was there. But yeah. For like for like the first hour though, like there was just a lot that happened that I just I just didn't really get. I just feel like I wasn't it wasn't like I wasn't um, watching it or like not paying attention. Like I was paying like full attention to the movie, absolutely. But like for that for that first like hour, I was just like, what's going on here, you know? But like, but yeah, I I found it good. Um, I don't mind the fact that it was subtitled. I found that really good. Um, I I still enjoyed it. Um, even with subtitles, um, once it, once it sort of picked up more. Um, one thing that I was really annoyed about, um, uh, maybe this was cause I was in a movie theater in Boston and people just love to express themselves. It's so annoying. Sorry. No, no, I'm not saying you shouldn't express yourself, but like, I hate when people like laugh really loudly in a movie theater because like this movie was like kind of dubbed as a comedy, but like it not isn't really that much like it, it definitely has some funny it definitely has some funny parts to it like like at one point this guy is like joking about like um you know th they thought that the woman had sex in his car he's like why would you want to get your sperm in my seat or something like that like he was going on and on about making fun of the fact that he had sex in his car like that was kind of funny but like there wasn't that many funny parts and like like, just at, like, random points that didn't even, like, make sense to laugh at, there would just be, like, people who would be laughing so loudly and obnoxiously. Like, that just, like, gets on my nerves. Like, like why are you laughing at that? That's not even funny. Not even funny. I'm just sitting here, like...
And I just hear, ha, 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 ha. Like, okay, cool, cool. Glad, glad you, glad you like that part. Glad you like that part. But yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, I really, I really love this movie. Um, I feel like it really, um, it really brought itself up in the second half. And I guess it, I guess it kind of established the story with, you know, what this family is and their current situation with this other family and, you know, what their relationship is. Like, you kind of, they kind of, like, establish, like, what their relationship is. So, it's, the first half wasn't all completely meaningless, but I'd say it definitely got more interesting after the first hour. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I really like this film. Um, is it an amazing film? Mm, not really. I, I think Train to Busan, when you're comparing, like, a foreign film like this, um, is a little better. Um, just because it's so fun all the way through to watch. Um, it's just so great all the way through. But, like, I still really love this movie. Um, yeah, I'd give it, a, I'd give it, like, an 8.2 out of 10. Um, really good acting, good performances, good, good setting, um, good action. Yeah. And it, and it was kind of like a, it almost tried to be like a, kind of like a jack of all trades when it came to the genres it, it did. Like, it was kind of like a drama, and also like a thriller, and also like, um, what was it, uh, comedy, yeah, comedy, kind of, kind of, it's like dark comedy, I guess, but yeah, but yeah, it, it kind of succeeded in doing all that, and you know, I know this isn't really that much of a horror movie, but, you know, I figured, you know, this movie isn't going to be out that much longer, and, um, you know, I thought I'd give you guys something unique for, for today's review, because... I know not a lot of people are going to get the chance to see this, so I figure I might as well get to give you guys my take on it in case you, the viewer, don't get to see it. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video either way, but I'll see you guys in the next one.